Longman Introductory Course for the TOEFL Test, The Paper Test by Deborah Phillips. Published by Pearson Longman ELT, a division of Pearson Education. CD4. Complete Test 3. Listening Comprehension. In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers you hear. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you will hear, That exam was just awful. Oh, it could have been worse. What does the woman mean? In your test book, you will read, A. The exam was really awful. B. It was the worst exam she had ever seen. C. It couldn't have been more difficult. D. It wasn't that hard. You learn from the conversation that the man thought the exam was very difficult and that the woman disagreed with the man. The best answer to the question, what does the woman mean, is D. It wasn't that hard. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Go on to the next page. Number one. I can't go skating. I don't know how. But it's so easy to learn. What does the woman say about skating? Number two. What did you think of that literature class? It wasn't exactly interesting. What does the man say about the class? Number three. The flight we wanted is full. Let's take the train instead. What does the man suggest? Number four. Do we need to fix supper for the children? I already gave them their supper. What does the woman say about the children? Number five. Did Sally go home over the holidays? No, she remained on campus instead. What does the man say about Sally? Number six. What should I do for this sore throat and cough? I'm going to prescribe some medication, and then you should return to my office next week. Who is the woman most likely to be? Number seven. Are you going to buy that stereo system? I don't think so. It's not cheap. What does the man imply?
Number eight. I just can't play that song very well. Try it over again from the beginning. What does the woman want the man to do? Number nine. I have the papers that you need. Could you please send them to me as soon as possible? What does the woman want the man to do? Number 10. It's difficult to work and go to school at the same time. You can say that again. What does the man mean? Number 11. How much of your hair would you like me to cut? Please take a little off the top and sides. Where does this conversation probably take place? Number 12. Eve, you look so cheerful today. I'm happy that it's not raining. Why does Eve look cheerful? Number 13. Can I just estimate my expenses? No, your expenses must be listed precisely. What does the man mean? Number 14. Robin's new car certainly looks impressive. I'll say. What does the woman mean? Number 15. Have you noticed Wanda's desk? Yes, it's always so messy. What does the man mean? Number 16. I need help finding these statistics for my report. Did you look in the reference section? That's where they should be. Who is the woman most likely to be? Number 17. I'm not very good with these new computer programs. Why don't you take a computer class? What does the man suggest? Go on to the next page. Number 18. Could you get tickets for the concert? I tried, but the ticket agency doesn't have any more tickets to sell. What does the man mean? Number 19. What did Lou want to know? He asked why I dropped out of school. What does the woman say about Lou? Number 20. Were you able to get the package mailed? I scarcely got to the post office before it closed. What does the woman imply?
Number 21. I can't believe you didn't apply for the position at the bank. Only this morning, two new people were hired. I think I missed the boat. What does the man mean? Number 22. Do you think the lecture's going to start soon? If it doesn't, we're going to be here all day. Your guess is as good as mine. What does the woman mean? Number 23. You're going to take five courses next semester? Don't you know a full program is only four? It's not unheard of, and I'm sure I can handle it. What does the man imply? Number 24. A new family has just moved into the apartment across the hall. Perhaps we should call on them a bit later. What does the woman mean? Number 25. I saw that the police officer stopped you. Did he give you a ticket? If he'd given me a ticket, I'd be a little unhappier. What does the man mean? Number 26. Do you mean to say you want to go dancing tonight after running in the race today? You've hit the nail right on the head. What does the woman say about the man? Number 27. I heard that you won the scholarship from the music department. Congratulations! No one was more surprised than I was. What does the man mean? Number 28. The history exam's tomorrow, and I think it's going to be pretty hard. Oh, I guess I'll have to brush up on a few dates before then. What does the man mean? Number 29. What do you think of this suit? Does it look right for the wedding? So you have decided to go. What had the woman assumed about the man? Number 30. What happened to you? You don't look so good. Well, I went skiing for the first time, and I wish I hadn't tried to learn how to ski on the steepest slope. What does the man imply? This is the end of part A. Go on to the next page. Now read and listen to the directions for Part B. Part B. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, 
Find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Questions 31 through 34. Listen as two friends discuss an arts and crafts fair. How would you like to go down to the park this afternoon? To the park? What's going on there? Would we just be walking around or sitting and relaxing or what? There's a wonderful arts and crafts fair going on, so the park's going to be pretty crowded. We won't be able to relax, but we should see a great arts and crafts fair. An arts and crafts fair? Yes, an arts and crafts fair. It's an annual event here and it's really popular. Artists from around the area bring a lot of their artwork and crafts and display them in the park. You can just walk around and look at the crafts if you want, or you certainly can buy things that you like, or you can just people watch. Oh, I don't know much about arts and crafts. What kinds of things will there be? Oh, all kinds. Paintings, pottery, jewelry, woodworking, leather goods, all kinds. Which kind do you prefer? I like all of it, but I guess I'll probably spend most of my time looking at jewelry. There are always handmade silver items and lots of interesting stones. Do you think you'll just be looking? Or are you going to take your wallet with you to the park? Oh, I always start out just looking. But in the end, I'm sure I'll need my wallet. Number 31. Where does the Arts and Crafts Fair take place? Number 32. How often does this Arts and Crafts Fair take place? Number 33. What would probably not be found at the Arts and Crafts Fair? Number 34. What does the woman imply that she'll do? Questions 35 through 38. Listen as two students discuss a course. Hi, Joe. I understand that you took Introduction to Physics last semester. Can you tell me about the course? Sure. The lecture or the lab? You mean there are both a lecture and a lab in this course? Actually, there are three lectures each week and one lab. Do I have to take both the lecture and the lab? The lecture doesn't sound too bad to me, but I know I don't want to spend my time in the lab. Well, you're going to have to spend some time in the lab if you want to take physics. It's required that you take the two of them together in the same semester. When do the lectures and lab sessions meet? The lectures are three times a week, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings for one hour each day. Then you must also take the lab on either Tuesday or Thursday afternoon from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. For four hours? Does it really take four hours each week to complete the physics lab? Oh, it usually takes more than four hours. And then you have to go home and write the lab report. There's a lab report every week? Yes, indeed. Usually about 10 pages worth. A 10-page lab report every week in addition to more than four hours in the lab? Oh, and don't forget the lectures and all the reading assignments and exams. This does not sound like a fun course to me. Interesting, maybe, but fun, no. And a lot of work, definitely. Number 35. Why does the woman want to talk to Joe?
Number 36. How many lectures are there each week? Number 37. How many hours is the lab each week? Number 38. How does the man describe the course? This is the end of part B. Go on to the next page. Now read and listen to the directions for part C. Part C. Directions. In part C of this section, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, you will read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you will hear, Listen to an instructor talk to his class about painting. Artist Grant Wood was a guiding force in the school of painting known as American Regionalist, a style reflecting the distinctive characteristics of art from rural areas of the United States. Wood began drawing animals on the family farm at the age of three, and when he was 38, one of his paintings received a remarkable amount of public notice and acclaim. This painting, called American Gothic, is a starkly simple depiction of a serious couple staring directly out at the viewer. Now listen to a sample question. What style of painting is known as American Regionalist? In your test book, you will read A. Art from America's inner cities. B. Art from the central region of the United States. C. Art from various urban areas in the United States. D. Art from rural sections of America. The best answer to the question, what style of painting is known as American Regionalist, is D. Art from rural sections of America. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now listen to another sample question. What is the name of Wood's most successful painting? In your test book, you will read A. American Regionalist B. The Family Farm in Iowa C. American Gothic D. A Serious Couple The best answer to the question, What is the name of Wood's most successful painting? is C. American Gothic Therefore, the correct choice is C. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Go on to the next page. Questions 39 through 42. Listen as a professor discusses a term paper assignment. That's the end of today's lecture. However, before you leave, I'd like to make sure that everything is clear about the term papers that you're working on. The term papers should be almost finished now. I hope you've been working hard on them for the last two months. I can assure you that it's quite clear to me when students try to do all the work on their term papers at the last moment. There are two important things that I'm very strict about. One, the due date, and two, the length of the paper. The term papers are due next Tuesday by five o'clock without fail. I see some unhappy faces out there, but the deadline is absolute. 
You've had the assignment for two months, so I see no need to extend the deadline. I will not accept any papers after five o'clock Tuesday. And needless to say, you will receive a failing grade if the paper isn't turned in on time. As far as the length is concerned, the papers should be 10 to 12 pages long. This means that the papers should not be shorter than 10 pages and should not be longer than 12 pages. Don't think that you can improve your grade on the term paper by turning in 20 or 30 pages. Please be very careful about the length of your paper and be sure to get it in on time. Number 39. When does the talk take place? Number 40. How long should the students have been working on their term papers? Number 41. What time are the papers due? Number 42. What number of pages is not acceptable? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a description of the job of smoke jumper. The Forest Service is the government agency that has the difficult job of fighting forest fires. One major problem in fighting forest fires is that forest fires often burn in areas where there are no roads or inadequate roads. So it can be quite difficult to get workers and equipment into the area to fight the fire. A very specialized job has developed within the Forest Service as a result, and that job is the job of smoke jumper. A smoke jumper is a firefighter who parachutes, or jumps, into an area where there's a forest fire. It's necessary to use smoke jumpers to fight a fire when the fire occurs in an area without roads. If there are no roads, the only way to get firefighters into an area quickly is for them to parachute in. After the smoke jumpers parachute into an area around a forest fire, they work on the ground to fight the fire. They may spend several days fighting the fire, and they often have to work long hours without adequate heavy equipment to battle the fire. Then, when that work is done, the only way to get out is to walk. After days of fighting a fire, they may have to walk for hours and hours to get to the nearest road. Number 43. What do smoke jumpers do? Number 44. How do smoke jumpers get to fires? Number 45. When must smoke jumpers be used to fight a forest fire? Number 46. What do the smoke jumpers have to do immediately after the fire is out? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a lecture by a university professor. Everyone, please take a seat because the lecture is about to start. The topic for today is glaciers, those huge blocks of ice that are found in the northernmost and southernmost parts of our world. 
Glaciers can be thousands and thousands of years old, and scientists are able to learn a lot by studying these ancient glaciers. The first thing that scientists can determine when studying a glacier is its age. In fact, it's very easy for scientists to learn exactly how old a particular glacier is from the number of layers in the glacier. Scientists drill into the ice and then they just count the layers in the glacier and from this they can determine the glacier's age. In addition to learning the ages of glaciers, Scientists have also been able to learn a lot about the Earth's past by studying glaciers. For example, something that you might not have thought about is that glaciers can be used to determine a tremendous amount about volcanoes in the past. Sometimes there's some volcanic dust in one layer of a glacier. By measuring where the volcanic dust occurs in the glacier and how much dust exists, Scientists can determine how many years ago a volcano erupted on Earth and get an approximate idea of the strength of the volcano. That's all for today. For the next class, you should read the next chapter in the textbook. Number 47. In which course would this lecture most probably be given? Number 48. How do scientists determine the age of glaciers? Number 49. What have scientists found within glaciers? Number 50. What should the students do for the next class? Appendix A. Similar sounds. Directions. Practice pronouncing the words in the box and the words in the exercise. Then, listen to each sentence on the recording and circle the letter of the word or words that you hear. Exercise A1. Number one. The new lamp does not work. Number two. There were holes in the road. Number three. Sue leaped with joy. Number four. I'm worried about being robbed. Number five. This culture's lore is amazing. Number six. He had an unbelievable leer on his face. Number seven. The boy was standing on the rail. Number eight. Sally is attracted by the lure of city life. Number nine. There is a row of low buildings. Number 10. The lane was filled with rain. Number 11. My friend lent me the money for rent. Number 12. There's no room for the loom. Number 13. They need to get rid of the lice. Number 14. We raced to the lake. Number 15. 
Number 15. There are several robes on the rack. Exercise A2. Number 1. Tom tries to cheat at cards. Number 2. We need a sheaf of paper. Number 3. The gel is on the shelf. Number 4. I'm going to chop the tomatoes. Number 5. The chest was full of junk. Number six. Jill suddenly felt a chill. Number seven. Sue hit her shin on a chair. Number eight. The jam is in a jar. Number nine, Tom choked on a chunk of food. Number 10, the ship is offshore. Number 11, Chet bought a cheap Jeep. Number 12, it was only a joke. It was all in jest. Number 13. I've had my share of chips. Number 14. I need to jot a note on a sheet of paper. Number 15. It was a chore to shear the sheep. Exercise A3. Number one. Pam placed a pan under the fan. Number two. The pile of trash has a vile smell. Number three. Sometimes he's a pest, but he's my best pal. Number four. The veal was a good buy. Number five. Chet took his pet to the vet. Number six. We have a great view of the vast area. Number seven. The van had to veer to avoid being hit. Number eight. The pew was made of fine pine. Number nine. Vera could feel the veil on her face. Number ten. Frank had a fat file filled with documents. Number 11. The ban on bets is the bane of her existence. Number 12. The pace of the race was too fast for all but a few. Number 13. We tried to bail with a pail, but we failed. Number 14. Suddenly a bat flew past her face. Number 15. The berry pie was the very best.
Exercise A4. Number one. He took a seat on the movie set. Number two. I feel bad because I fell. Number three. Peter picked a peck of peppers. Number four. The teen was out until ten. Number five. He has a pit bull for a pet. Number six. I made a bet that my team would beat the other. Number seven. We got rid of the red chair. Number eight. Dave is dead because of his bad deed. Number nine. It's neat that she can knit. Number ten. The dean heard the din in the den. Exercise A5. Number one. There's too much water in the dam. Number two. Lee offered a lame excuse for his actions. Number three. The fish took a bite of the bait. Number four. The pain was edged in pine. Number five. You might look under the mat. Number six. Kate was playing with the kite. Number seven. It was her fate to be involved in the fight. Number eight. He tried in vain to stop the blood flowing from his vein. Number nine. I hate the height that the hat gives you. Number ten. The man works in the main mine. Exercise A6. Number one. The sun will come out soon. Number two. The pole was in the pool. Number three. The oil boom was a boon for the town. Number four. He can't find the boot, but he's looking. Number five. He coped with being cooped up. Number six. I am not in the mood to play in the mud. Number seven. The root caused a rut in the road. Number eight. They roam the room looking for rum. Number nine. The nun who was known arrived at noon. Number ten. The dumb idea to add a dome to the building is doomed. Exercise A7. Number one. Tom told a tall tale about the team.
Number two. May enjoyed the sun's rays as she lay on the sand. Number three. It's really rare for Ron to get so riled. Number four. We want to get rid of the pests who are making a din. Number five. I leaned on the rail of the ferry as it crossed the lake. Number six. Mike read in bed and jotted down a few notes. Number seven. I'm going to vie for first place in the race. Number eight. I had to bail my friend out of jail when he failed to pay the fine. Number nine. You need to heed the dean's advice and respect the ban on beer. Number 10. Please sit in the closest seat and set the box on the mat in the rear of the room. Number 11. Pete peered out the window where he had a view of a few boats on the bay. Number 12. The fans let out a roar when the ball hit the bat. Number 13. At the shore, he picked up some seashells and watched the ships pass by. Number 14. The crowd booed and jeered at the terrible joke. Number 15. Steve had a plate of raw vegetables and chips in his lap. When the plate landed on the floor, he had a really sheepish grin on his face. This is the end of the audio program.